Let's make a start and our panellists can join when they, uh, when they find the room. Uh, this workshop number 93 is organised by Centre, which is the regional organisation for CCTLDs, country code top level domains in Europe. There are other regional organisations and I'm very pleased that we have uh, Carolina Aguera, uh, the general manager of the Latin American um, equivalent. Uh, there are also equivalent organisations for the Asia Pacific region and also uh, for Africa. What we've been doing with Centre in the last, uh, throughout the IGF uh, uh, life cycle so far, is just to use these workshops to present uh, life of the CCTLDs. Um, and I think that the key points that come out from this succession of workshops are the diversity of, of these country code registries, their strong link with the nation state or with the region that they represent. They have independent policy making and this is a very interesting uh, thing to review because you see all sorts of different approaches to the issues of the day or the issues of the region. They tend to have uh, very strong links with their government. Not all do, but some do. But also innovation. I think that, that many of the uh, good practices that are seen in CCTLDs uh, uh, are an inspiration and have proved to be an inspiration uh, for some of the uh, generic top-level domain policy setting. So we have a wonderful panel here for you today. Uh, starting on my uh, far left, we have uh, Chris Carolina Aguera, the general manager of LAC-TLD, which is the regional organization for Latin American country code registries. We're very pleased to welcome also Michael Neville, head of the task force for internet policy development from the European Commission, and also a very uh, well-seasoned traveller on the uh, uh, internet and domain name road over the last decade or so. Uh, I have Anne Rochelle Inne, who is the Chief Operations Officer from AFRINIC, AFRINIC being the, uh, the IP uh, resource allocator for the African region and also a, an extremely seasoned professional in the domain name world. Um, we have also Konstantinos uh, Komaitis, policy advisor for the Internet Society, a, uh, a very experienced um, academic and also former chair of the non-commercial stakeholder uh, constituency within ICANN. So very pleased to welcome warmly our panelists. We're not going to do the sort of the classic opening speech thing because we would like to make this as interactive as possible. What we're going to talk about is the is um, what we're going to focus on are the, these questions set out in the program. We're going to sort of skip the first one for now and come back to it at the end if time allows, but really focus our thoughts today on the impact of the new generic top-level domains program. So just by way of background, ICANN, the organization um, that, that coordinates naming and numbering, has opened up a process and over 1,900 applications have been made for new top-level domains. So I think the overarching question we're asking ourselves here today from a CCTLD global perspective is what impact is this going to have both um, on the, the regional and national markets, but also what governance impact is this going to have and what governance role do uh, country codes have to play? So, um, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Emily Taylor, I'm an internet governance uh, consultant. I always forget to do that. Um, so, uh, we're also expecting a speaker from Google who may or may not arrive. Hope he does, because I've got lots to ask him. But um, uh, we can, let's start, first of all, I I'd like to start, if I may, with you, Konstantinos. And from your perspective, kind of very familiar with the domain name world, but outside the CCTLD community, what's your observation 
about the way CCTLDs can contribute to governance and do you see this kind of changing as a result of the new GTLD program at all? Thank you, uh, Emily. Hello, everybody. Uh, and thank you very much for inviting me in this panel. Some, oh, sorry, uh, some things first. Uh, CCTLDs are very important. Uh, CCTLDs are items of cultural identity, um, in most cases at least. Uh, and it's, it's a very interesting thing to see the way various countries decide to exploit, uh, within quotes, their CCTLDs. Some of them decide to open them up uh, with no restrictions. Others, on the other hand, prefer to have some st more strict rules as to how registration is going to take place. So... Within the governance sphere, I personally see the CCTLDs as inter interacting to the extent, of course, that this interaction is feasible with GTLDs and especially with new GTLDs. When in the beginning CCTLDs and GTLDs made their appearance at the same time, uh, John Postel, who is responsible for the domain name system at the time, he said whichever organization we are about to create, we need to make sure that they do not touch CCTLDs. CCTLDs are part of national sovereignty and each country should be allowed to exploit them the way um, uh, it wants. So this rule has actually been consistent and it has followed the administration of CCTLDs. So right now with the GTLDs I find that we are in a very unique point in time because I would like to see and I would hope that there is this interaction of best practices or you can call them whatever else you, else you want. And do you see that happening in practice? I see that happening uh, to a certain extent. I will give you an example. I was part, for example, of uh, the uh, special trademark uh, issues team within uh, the internal corporation for assigned names and numbers that came up with the new rights protection mechanisms and whatever you believe about those conclusions, the, the team went back to nominate system and not only to nominate system, to other systems just to inform ourselves as to how dispute resolutions were being created. So for me that was a very interesting interaction and another very important point is that uh, concerns competition. Okay, uh, uh, new GTLDs are about to emerge, there is already competition being created, but we should start thinking competition a little bit out of the GTLD space and into the CCTLD space. So, for example, I was reading that St. Martin's is about to launch .sx. Uh, there is already a .XXX, .sex, the word, is already a new application for a new GTLD. And suddenly you have a CCTLD emerging which can easily compete. So there are part of economic innovation. Now, and my final point... Yes, yeah, sorry. Let, let's come back to okay. your final point because I, uh, the, there's a lot that you've raised there which I'd like to sort of just sure. test out on the panel. First of all, uh, if I can come to you next, Carolina, second. Um, let's look from your perspective in the Latin American region and representing those CCTLD registries. When you look at the GTLD application process, first of all, to take Konstantinos's point, do you do your members perceive a sort of hotting up of the competition? And my second question, actually, is are you pleased with the number of applications for GTLDs from your region? Thank you, Emily, for the questions and thank you, Constantinos, for the props. Um, competition. Definitely, uh, this is a new uh, scenario that's being uh, set uh, for CCTLDs all over the place and uh, lack CCTLDs are uh, very much aware that uh, they will have to accommodate to this uh, new uh, changing environment where um, it's very inter interesting to see how these new GTLDs are because they are generic they were compli they have a uh, an agreement with ICANN and their whole compliance system with ICANN will be much stricter than those of CCTLDs and I don't know if the audience is aware that CCTLDs 
in a way they are not very accountable to ICANN uh, in the way they function. So they develop their own rules, their own policies, their own principles. And here we have a representative of Dot NZ, who is a CCTLD that has worked heavily at, in the past CCNSO meetings to develop this idea of what are the principles that guide CCTLDs. So in a way, CCTLDs had been sort of in this comfort zone for many for nearly 25 years in most cases in, in the LAC region and now they're seeing the whole environment being and are they comfortable with that um, some of them see this as the opportunity I mean to change I mean this is the the right context to change and others are going to engage in more defensive uh, practices particularly I've heard of some initiatives of more um, of communication, campaigns, etc., which can be sort of a little quite aggressive if, if they come into practice. But above all everything else, I, and I am taking some uh, of Constantino's um, remarks on, on how the trademark system has sort of uh, expanded and that isomorphism is a practice that is extending and that I believe that we, from a regional organizational perspective, something that we do is actually say, okay, we are, th these are benchmarks, this, is, this has worked for best practices and they they set up benchmarks and they set up the principles as to what can be expected next. And then we have CCTLDs that work like generics. Um, and, uh, and the Dot SX case that you have raised, which has recently become a LAC TLD member as well, which is a case I know uh, very closely, is extremely interesting because they are very much aware they have to engage with the local St. Martin community and they have done some amazing things over there. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, we're going to come back yes. to everybody, so don't don't feel like you have to pour out everything all at once. Let's, I'd like to turn to you now, if I may, Anne Rochelle Inne, and also everybody, welcome to our speaker, uh, Marco Pancini from Google. Thank you for joining us. Um, and I'm going to come to you next, so just get into the zone. Um, Anne Rochelle, from your position in Africa, looking at the GTLD program. Are you happy with the number of applications from the African region for GTLDs? Thanks, Emily. Um, happy would be a big <laughs> word, but uh, <laughs> given the circumstances and given um, basically the, the fact that the industry is really practically nascent on the continent, um, one of the things that you have to realize is that, you know, Africa for the longest time was not really connected because we didn't have uh, bandwidth to start with. So when you don't have bandwidth, the rest uh, basically doesn't fall in place. And, um, you know, CCTLDs in our region have always been um, uh, uh, were pretty small. It's only now that they're all gearing up to becoming something. And uh, the number of applications that we had and uh, we've had at ICANN for new GTLDs is, um, I think, consistent simply with the the state of you know affairs in the region. So I'm, no, I can't say I'm happy, but you know it's a good start. Well, if you were sitting from the perspective of a, a CCTLD manager in Africa and facing all of the uh, challenges that you've just outlined very briefly in just getting up on your feet and establishing a thriving registry for your country or, or region, how are you going to be equipped to, to cope with the competition that's just going to come sweeping over uh, the region? Or do you feel that that this will just bypass Africa? Do you think that anybody's thinking of marketing into Africa with domain names? I'm pretty sure a lot of people will. Africa is uh, today, what, uh, a billion uh, people? And, uh, you know, there is a market, definitely. You know, um, there is a market for domain names. There is a market for services on, uh, on the Internet. Um, what I would say is that I don't really fear competition because, you know, um, having worked at ICANN for quite a few years and having seen the level of uh, uptake from um, uh, some of the, let's say, older 
introduced generic top level domains, I'm not really afraid for, uh, you know, CCTLDs. Why? Because also there are quite a few essential services simply that you won't go do on a dot whatever, you know. Um, I won't be asking for my passport. I won't be asking for my birth certificate. I won't be paying my utilities on a dot com. So, you know, those are, you know, essential services, all the e-citizenship, all the e-education, e-health, e, you know, essential services that are on the ground that will pick up with national TLDs. And, you know, alongside that, and I guess uh, Michael and a few others won't touch on, will touch on that, all of that comes with appropriation of things that are, you know, data protection of people. Um, being on a TLD that is not in your jurisdiction definitely, you know, subjects you in terms of content to another jurisdiction. So, as I said, I won't be, you know, my country will not be putting my, my birth certificate on a dot whatever there. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, well, there is space for CCTLDs. Well, maybe we can continue this conversation and bring in Marco here, Marco Pancini from Google. Your company has applied for, I think, 100, 101 applications. How many is it? 98. 98, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so 98 applications from Google, uh, a, num a large number also from Amazon, none from Facebook. But assuming that at least some of these applications that you've made are intended for a wide market, not just for the company's own use. How are you going to market in Africa and Latin America when there are, what, how many accredited registrars are there in Latin America, Karen? Half a dozen in, in Latin America, about the same number in Africa. Five. How are you going to sell them in Africa? Or do you care? That's a very good question. So first why why gtlds and what is our vision uh, about uh, the gtlds i think it's very core to our mission which is organizing the world information and make them uh, use, useful and accessible for all the user to look into this opportunity uh, we really believe that the opportunity given by the gtlds uh, is uh, increasing innovation is uh, is uh, actually expanding the way um, the namespace and extending uh, the utility of the DNS. So we see it as a uh, global opportunity. So probably we didn't start uh, from the assumption that we were looking into this opportunity with uh, a specific focus on one, on one region. Basically our vision about extending our services on, in all the different uh, region is, is uh, providing to all the users the same opportunity. This is also very uh, uh, very at the heart of the Google vision also of mobile. Let's take, for example, mobile. Uh, some, uh, some could see uh, as mobile as a threat for, for a company like Google, which is very uh, you know, linked to the experience on your laptop, making a search, doing things online, uh, and then uh, moving from, from your, search, uh, your search experience. And therefore, you could... Uh, let's, let's assume that Android was not uh, part of our, uh, of our ecosystem. You could assume that Android could uh, be a, a threat or a risk for, for a company like Google. Instead, we believe it's a great opportunity because the next two billions, three billions of Internet users will probably have the first experience online through a mobile. So again, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's part of our global vision. It's a part of our vision of organizing world information. It's totally going in this direction, and, uh, and uh, this is why we are, we are very excited about this opportunity. But it, I, I didn't hear an answer to the question how you're actually going to market these domains when you have no registrar base. Uh, you're going to be in that market now. They're not going to be the, the, the infrastructure within these regions where you say that you want to expand. Does that figure in your strategic planning at all? So, again, I don't think there is a... Sp we, we have gone through this process with a specific business... Uh, goal in mind uh, we, we we went through this process with the, the excitement of, of uh, again as i said to look into this opportunity in in order to improve uh, the way we can organize information for our user we can allow our user to have a more direct and more secure and more safe uh, experience online uh, no, looking in, a, in, a, in a, on a different field, a lot of people is wondering around the approach to from Google to privacy. We really 
first, uh, first our approach is uh, to provide the useful services uh, to our user. Then is uh, to put them in a situation, since we have a trust relationship, to put them in a situation which makes them feel comfortable towards uh, the way they interact with Google, which means that for us privacy and security are coming uh, like uh, as, a, as a unicum. Same thing for the GTLDs. We don't think uh, that when we look into opportunities like that, we do this uh, because we think about a specific region or a specific exploitation, and even less because we think that we want to become the new gatekeeper of, of, of this, uh, this uh, sector. We are doing this because we really believe in the opportunity, we are thrilled about the opportunity, and uh, actually the fact that we, we are one of the few companies uh, looking into this is because uh, we, 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 we really believe in the potential of this in order to make it easier for users to access to content, especially through mobile. Michael Niebel from the European Commission. Um, I don't really want to ask you about the process itself, but just more general questions about the, you know, what the, the effect on the, the market of this huge shot in the arm of massive expansion overnight. You have companies coming into to the rather quaint CCTLD world, like Google, who have a track record of absolute game changing. Do you foresee that there might be market that, that, that there might be CCTLD failures as a result of this new competition? Because with competition you have winners and losers, right? And secondly, um, because I know that the Commission uh, has a very strong interest in mu the multilingual internet, when we look at 2,000 applications in round numbers and about 100 applications with IDNs into a world where even Android phones don't properly support IDNs. Are you satisfied with that as a proportion of the whole? Uh, and what impact do you foresee uh, uh, in, uh, to the multilingual internet? Do you think it's going to help? Thank you. Thank you, Emily. The, the last question uh, we as a commission, we have been always advocating multilingualism. That's what we are all about in the Union. And it's very important also for the, the access of the people. It's no use to have access to the Internet but not understand the language. And uh, this is why I am also been very much advocating the introduction of IDNs and of course, what you're saying is not really a, a glamorous result. It's a little bit like what you say about Africa. We're not uh, there yet, and uh, it's a first step. And if, if you probably you know more about the structure of these applications and might say something about that, because that teaches you also uh, something. I wanted also to come back to uh, some of the when you when you talk about market failure and doomsday. I'm not a player. I can't say anything. You, you bureaucrats shouldn't make this kind of statements. Uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, Google, this will not be the last round uh, asking Google. There are lots of layers of interest and lots of speculations in the kind of in the evenings of ICANN meetings uh, what this is all about. Uh, and I believe what you're saying, but people are thinking up all kinds of uh, uh, scenario, as you can imagine. Quite, quite fascinating. Um, but I'm saying, I want to say something about um, CCTLDs because I'm, I'm not a player, but I've been very much involved in the creation of really a new kid on the block, a CCTLD of a special kind, uh, one CCTLD created in this century. And, and having in a market which was, I mean, there, there were a lot of very big players, and the biggest players, and you, you used to be uh, part of this, and you have, have the Germans, you have, have the UK, you have the Netherlands. So, but... But this new CCTLD, uh, entre guillemets, managed now to have 3.7 million. Giovanni, is that right? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, so th so that's, that's, that shows there is an interest and in that there is an identification. And I find quite interest in your argument, where would you put certain, certain uh, information? And, and also what you said about accountability. Right. We've had all these discussions about exchange of letter, icon board, and whatever in the CCTLD market. But accountability goes in different directions. And we have, in the creation of .eu, we might have, it's a very complex system of accountability, but 
there are strict rules and they make sure that the legal framework that is applicable in the union is really directly translated into it, to the activities of uh, .eu. And, and it, as you know, it's a right, quite complex legal plan, but when I have discussions on security and privacy like this morning, where I was on the panel where these two matches, it's sometimes helpful to have rules that are transparent and where people know where they are, and then you don't, if you don't have so many grey zones, you don't have so many discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael, I'd just like one follow-up there on, on .eu, and you, you very, um, very clearly described this you know, entry into the uh, competitive uh, uh, market in, in Europe and also the, the framework that stood behind that. Um, it's something that, that we'll probably see more as, as the market expands is that market players are going to be operating with different rules of the game. That this is something that you mentioned yourself, Carolina, that, that some of the CCTLDs really are not operating with the same sort of accountability mechanisms as, say, uh, a .eu would have, as, say, a GTLD registry will have. Is this going to be a level playing field? Is it going to be fair? Do we know? And I mean, I, I'm not asking you to look into the future, but do you have any concerns when you see that coming? I really don't have any concerns, but maybe then I'm wrong that I haven't thought about concerns I could have. As being a German, I'm, of course, inclined to worry about concern about a lot of things. <laughs> the, 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 um, what I see is almost, uh, in, I go, I stretch out to Africa in, in a way uh, that it could be an argument. It could be an argument to trust something uh, to a player where you know the rules and where there are certain conditions and uh, that could even be a competitive in, in advantage. Let's talk, you talked about tr data protection, uh, having one ecosystem. Let's talk about data protection uh, and certain security mechanisms. So I think um, this, this non-level playing field does not always mean it's bad. Mm -hmm. You compete on different issues. You might compete on speed, you might compete on protection, uh, on glamour or whatever. So I think uh, I'm not worried about that. Thanks. I'm going to come out to the audience now. So um, I'm just going to come quickly to Constantinos for a reaction to that because I saw you smiling. So I want to know what was on your mind <laughs> as, uh, as Michael was speaking there. But please, if you would like to intervene, we would like to involve the audience as much as possible. If you've got questions or if you've got comments or experiences to share, you would be very welcome. Um, so, Konstantinos, and then I'll come to you, madam. Thank you. I will take the question one step back, and I would ask, is there a need to be a level playing field to begin with? I mean, CCTLD is one of the things that they are, are all about diversity. So, as f the way I see it, and because they really correspond, most of them at least, to some um, sensitivities, for lack of a better word, that only certain people can relate to, they don't really need to have common rules across the board. And at the end of the day, the best there is regulatory competition, there is structural competition, there are various forms of competition. So they have, there is a chance, there is a great opportunity out there for CCTLD operators to come and structure. They know their markets, they know what they, their citizens need. I totally agree with you that e-government is will be based around the CCTLDs, but at the same time, let's try to uh, let's make sure that there is some sort of information flowing between CCTLDs and GTLDs. It doesn't really have to be bottom up or top on uh, or top down. It's not such an issue. Uh, the way I see it is more of an issue of trying to identify channels of cooperation, channels of best practices, and respond to those specific needs and another opportunity to do that is also through the uh, IDNs and I will stop here. Thank you. Please uh, um, ask your question. Okay. My name is Mary Uduma and I'm from Nigeria.ng uh, and I'm from Anne's um, um, continent. Um, I'll paint a scenario. A scenario is this. Some of the countries in, in Africa they don't, they've not even established the structure of manage, internally managing their CCs. 
some are still in the hands of people they don't even know and uh, the prices are very very high then others are some that have organized theirs but um, they have strong competition from the dot coms dot net dot org of this world and now um, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, well, they, they, they do their, they govern themselves, do their, their rule like dot ng where self, self regulatory um, uh, uh, um, organization that is managing the, uh, the, the CCT for Nigeria. And um, for that reason, we could, okay, go to government and say, look, government, do this and that. The rate first, the rate of internet penetration, the rate of uptake, the rate of um, digital literacy. Okay, there are all those issues that are that, that are, are, are confronting us. And uh, Google in our country has Google.ng. They will just tear down Google.ng and go on to dot Google. <laughs> and that that's another thing. And uh, again. I think I, I tend to agree that uh, the the CCs will not only be will not be looking at competing with the new GTLD. Actually, at the beginning, some of us were really opposed to the new GTLD being introduced. We were saying we have not even gotten our CCs taken up while the new GTLDs. But on the other hand, we have opportunity to now communicate, engage our governments, engage our people. Um, um, Play the, the the patriotism, <laughs> patriotism. Uh, um, um, what is it called? Drive to get them to take up the our CCs and not be looking at making money, but uh, flag flying our flags. Flag. Thank you very much for that intervention. Please do come forward with with um, other questions if you would like to. Uh, I'm going to ask Anna Rochelle in there to comment on that. Um, I, I actually totally with, uh, agree with Mary and uh, Constantinus just because um, I, I really do believe that the, they, they both have, you know, different, um, let's say, target groups, but also uh, different values in the, in the eyes of people. In as much as I might want, because I'm a professional, to go under the bees for something that I'm doing, you know, um, I like to be recognized at home as somebody who is who has a business at home, who is part of the community, because that sells. You know, people would trust me if I'm a, uh, I don't know, an attorney that has a business at home and all of that. Uh, if they have the feeling that, yeah, I'm at home and they can find me and I'm playing by the home rules. OK, that's also very important. So. I, I do believe that, you know, both will be there, there will be competition, but at the same time, really, they both have their, their spaces. And, uh, you know, I think that will be, that will stay going forward. Thank you. I think we're just looking for a microphone for you, sir. So, um, uh, have you on, my, oh, it's coming your way, so thank you. So when you get the microphone, please introduce yourself and, uh, and make your comment or question. Hello, everybody. I'm Hong Bing Zhu from uh, CINIC, the, the Chinese reg uh, dot, uh, registry of dot CM. Uh, I would like to share our experience of uh, uh, the how, how we're dealing with the new GTLDs, and uh, especially, uh, especially as we are actually one applicant of new GTLDs, and uh, uh, because we are the in, we are kind of emerging economies, we want to take these opportunities for our local development. Actually, we are uh, currently uh, now we are facing uh, how to dealing with ICANN of, of about the new norms for new institutions. Uh, there are, tr uh, I think, many of their new norms and uh, institutions actually contain some advantage for the uh, improvement of our TLD operation. Uh, and uh, I, I think if we involved actively, uh, we can actually. Uh, build more capacity of our TLD um, operation. And uh, uh, as a CCTLD registry, uh, actually we uh, have positioned ourselves uh, as, uh, w with three functions. 
The first, uh, we position ourselves as the le leading force to build the local capacity, because uh, as you know that uh, for developing countries, also uh, as ourselves as emerging countries, uh, we don't have as, as the advanced technology or uh, the uh, funding or uh, some uh, specific uh, qualification to meet the ICANN's, uh, uh, ICANN's rules for applying the new GTLDs. So uh, we actually to put, uh, trying to push uh, the local capacity building and we spread, we spread our technology to our local community for the uh, growth uh, of uh, the local uh, TLD operation and uh, we, are, we are the leading force to pushing the universal acceptance of uh, the Chinese IDN TLD and uh, we uh, Thank yeah. you very much and um, you've raised so many good yeah. points that I just sort of, sort of want, want to, to spread them with the the panel and get some reactions to them because yeah. the first thing that I heard uh, and it's great to have this uh, this interaction with you is that you as a, CC, a very established CCTLD registry are now hopefully uh, if all goes well going to also be a GTLD registry which without getting into the real kind of heavy lifting of the ICANN environment will bring you across into a different structure and this kind of this does speak to some of the questions that we're supposed to be dealing with and of course I've not really done that yet but about the how new how accountability mechanisms are going to change as a result of this Google if all goes to plan will also be part of this registry community in fact the registry community in ICANN is going to be enormous and it's going to have practically every every sort of business you can think of but the other thing that I wanted to to come to Carolina Aguera of uh, of LAC TLD about is the point that you raised of the role of the CCTLD registry as an enabler in its local environment as something that can foster the uh, ideal conditions and capacity building and I would like to just ask you in the Latin American region are any of your member registries do that do you see a sort of cluster of local registrars around the, who are serving in the local language is that something that you see in the region yes um, definitely I'm, I'm, I didn't answer as answer your first question in the panel and it relates precisely to this question so yes exactly um, as you're all aware the the presence of new GTLDs coming uh, from the LAC region was uh, quite uh, poor only 24 applications but it's worth noting that uh, there were three applications that were uh, um, presented by two registries, let's say two, ap two applications that were presented by .br and one presentation that was that the back-end <laughs> registry provider and marketing services will, will be provided by uh, Nick Mexico for .lat. So .lat is, a, is a, a regional community, new GTLD that we are still hoping for, 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 for the final response. But, um, Going now back to your, your question, Emily, um, we, we do have a very limited register um, structure in, in Latin America, particularly ICANN accredited registers, but we do have a sort of a um, vibrant, sort of vibrant community around, the, around .br because of the way the, the registry has developed and its uh, principles uh, around a thick quiz, anyone can uh, commercialize uh, .br's um, domain names so uh, in a way um, that it's uh, it's an example for the region on maybe how to develop this local community registrars and uh, going back to how um, how we perceive this uh, lack of um, general interest or applications from the region um, I think there's a great deal of work to be done in, in, in our regions, and I think Africa is the case as well, in terms of developing uh, the market structures, in developing policy, uh, and in developing um, civil society awareness 
uh, of all the impact that new GTLDs can bring to communities. So I think it's, it's the whole sort of political economy of the, of the domain name system that uh, has to be revisited uh, after what we've seen. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Do raise your hand if you... Uh, is there anything in the remote? No. Okay. Any questions? Oh, Konstantinos. Um, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to put you on. I'm going to come to, I'm going to, come to you instead, Marco. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, we've heard from the speaker from China and also the experience in Latin America. I'm going to sort of direct this over here and, and whoever gets there first. But these, you're starting to see a sense of the CCTLD having this rather special role in its country um, and of, of enabling the kind of a build out of infrastructure you know is that is that going to be under threat in the new order do you think if if CCTLDs are unable because they have different uh, outlook maybe they might be undermined by competition or do you think that there's going to be that they will rise to the challenge well, I can start off and then uh, Marco can uh, continue. Uh, I've heard a very interesting thing, which is capacity building. So, first of all, uh, the way I see it at least, capacity building is not just infrastructure. There is also social capacity building, which is a very important component of the CCTLDs. And when I was saying previously that I see a unique opportunity for GTLDs and CCTLDs, to work together, not formally under formal bureaucratic structures, but to exchange ideas. That's what I was referring to. CCTLDs can really inform social infrastructure here. There is a, ve a social capacity building. This is the unique opportunity. And in countries like Africa or in Latin America, that still they are trying very, very hard to top up the game in terms of infrastructure, critical infrastructure, technical infrastructure. That w that's how you can bring established registries and uh, learn from them. And there you have a very good marriage, at least the way I see it. Marco, is that something that Google's going to be interested in? A marriage of convenience, perhaps? <laughs> we, we, we have truly the, a believer in, uh, in this idea of the ecosystem, yeah. where we are all a part of, uh, of uh, this, um, this uh, environment. <coughs> we are all collaborating in this environment. We actually can benefit f each other from, from the environment. The, the big switch, the big uh, jump that, we need, that, that somebody who wants to be part of this ecosystem has to make is, uh, is uh, to put, uh, uh, to, 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 to have a new mentality, which is to, to be open to new challenges. So when, when, I, when I hear about competition, I think competition is, is, is really uh, in the DNA of, of uh, the, the actors of this ecosystem that we have in mind. And, and Perhaps yeah. some more than others, to, you know, to be quite fair. I think that, um, you know, and, and also, you know, when you hear the, the concerns from, from speakers like the speaker from Nigeria about the challenges they're yeah. facing just to literally get up on their feet, is it really fair to face, the, you know, not, not, not any particular country, but is it really fair to face countries with the sort of the might of Google, which can, can just blow away this, this, uh, these, these fledgling organizations. Actually, what again? What 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 I can see is uh, is uh, is a great opportunity for the both of us because if you see uh, the structure of our application, the most of them and the one that could be more interesting from a certain point of view are open. And actually, we, you, we can think a lot of of, of, of uh, interaction and collaboration. And again, the idea the. the the mission of Google is to make uh, successful uh, the small and medium enterprise, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, uh, uh, the people that want to challenge in entrepreneurship in, in countries in a region like Africa, in a region like Asia, where the next billions of internet users will be. And so, again, to me, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's actually extremely exciting. I would like to hear from Ori, from uh, that, uh, uh, my colleague from the region, what she thinks about that. Because for me, it's easy. I mean, you sounds like an offer but, to uh, me. Are you interested? Well, when the chips are down, <laughs> <laughs> what's the objective of Google to make money, right? And um, uh, making money, they have all it takes to do the 
marketing, convincing people to take their domain. And I, I've, I've been wondering why Google wants to enter into that space. Why not provide us with the, with the platform to be able to, to continue with our work in the, in the domain name business? But if, if they've seen a business to make money in that space, now they are there. But the, the truth is that we need a lot of convincing to, be, to make to our people to refuse to take Google and take .ng. Michael Niebel, can I come to you on this, just in a, in a broad sense, uh, with your view from the Commission of, uh, you know, within the European region where you have um, countries and accession countries at different rates, uh, in a way, sort of, is it, uh, you know, it, what's your experience where you see sort of very ha harsh competitors, like very capable competitors like Google coming in and sweeping aside some of the more fledgling organizations that might have a very important linguistic or cultural uh, aspect that, that could be lost through this. Does that make sense? That's a good Emily, the question makes a lot, a lot of sense. Um, the answer to say, what's the experience of Google sweeping away? Uh, we are. Well, we aren't. Sorry, I think we're it's not, unfair of me to, yeah. to, to pick on Google, but it's yeah, but simply yeah. because Marco is sitting here. Let's uh, just take no. a no, no. I'm just no. I'm just saying we aren't there, and it's quite interesting. No, I I just note one thing. For instance, at the ICON meeting, nobody talked openly about this. Now we have a panel where people are spelling it out. So yeah. that's already coming to the surface, which is a good thing. Another thing is I wanted to about the sweeping away and the big ones and the small ones. Now. In Europe or in, in the EU, I mean, it's not like there's only one class of, of, of TLDs. You have countries where the CCTLDs are really small guys. Yeah. And there are certain reasons for that and sometimes different reasons. And, in, and you have also the biggest CCTLDs there. So, so uh, I mean, you have already a mishmash of things. And it's not that that has been very, very bad for, for, for what we call <laughs> then the European ecosystem. It's quite clear that if we look at the union, we have, we had all the incentives to create, I don't want to use the level playing field word again, but to, to create uh, ecosystems in the member states that are comparable. Mm -hmm. And I've been in on the first, my first panel was, this was the capacity building to get at the same security level was one of the challenges, remains one of the big challenges because you have the, the big guys that have it and the others that have to come up and that's one of our, our jobs. But I see it here in the developing world, of course, it's, it's, it's much more of a, and, and you don't always have godfathers, other countries that, that carry you with you like we, we try to do that in, to have a convergence in the, in the union which, which then helps the, the weaker players to come at the same same level, so I, I think that's a that's a real challenge uh, um, that comes out here. Yeah. Marco, thank you. V very quickly, but not not to to answer to your comment, uh, which I think uh, again, uh, accordingly to the mm, uh, to the famous uh, Spider-Man uh, <laughs> motto, big responsibilities, big power, big responsibility. So I, I I get it, no no problem. The point is that the way we measure our success is on the success of our user. So I totally agree that we are a business and we are in this business uh, to make money. But in a certain sense, our business model is based on the success of the other actors of the ecosystem that I described before. So it's, it's very unlikely that we will enter into, an, into a business in order to make uh, the life of the other actors in this ecosystem that are collaborating miserable. Actually, is to grow the business altogether. But, uh, you know, an ecosystem or a family, I don't think people intend to make each other miserable, but sometimes it just does happen. Um, and Rochelle, did you, did you want to comment on some of these aspects of capacity building and what the impact might be in this, in this brave new world that we have? So capacity building has been one of the things that I think uh, the regional organizations have taken upon themselves to do uh, by, uh, you know, 
first of all, coming together, sharing experiences, seeing what others are doing, taking it back home, and then, you know, spilling it out to the community. Um, we have um, CCTLDs in the region uh, that are still, for example, uh, housed in universities. One of the cases is, uh, is Senegal. Um, you know, that country has taken, the, the, the way they manage it, it is that, you know, they get the students to also be involved basically in the, uh, in the life of the domain. They get them to, you know, all the students that are in um, uh, uh, the master's class, for example, engineers classes, tend to come, you know, do some hands-on work on, uh, on DNS uh, stuff. Um, take turns also in monitoring what is happening on, uh, you know, the, the architecture and infrastructure, um, you know, so things like that. So definitely the CCTLD can be not only, you know, part of the capacity building, but as Constantino said, the most important part is also that they are part of building the whole business. You know, I mean, it's not only about the, the domain names. It is about the right content to the community, you know. So, and in that, uh, not only the right content, but also in the right language. We, we, we touch a little bit about, you know, IDNs. A lot of them still do not, um, you know, give out IDN um, content and domain names, but I think this is one of the things that we are aspiring to. And um, in terms of also, you know, capacity building, some of the institutions regionally have been helping and uh, other CCTLDs and organizations from around the world come together to help with that, so. Well, the, actually, I'm going to keep you on the spot, if I may, Anne Rochelle, because you, you talk about um, capacity building and you're talking quite rightly about the CCTLD, but of course, I think it would be fair to mention your own organization, um, AFRINIC, as as a great contributor to capacity building and I, you were talking about um, the things that create local content which is a sort of holy grail I think for many in this sort of environment who would like to see more local language content. Um, what if you had to kind of list out two or three factors that have to be present in order to kind of get uh, local language content from from where you're sitting what, what do you think they would be? that fair to us? Uh, sorry to ask you that. Not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not fair where I came from. Um, I was <laughs> now I was sitting yesterday on a panel exactly discussing that and the take up of IDNs in fact in um, you know not only new GTL TLDs you know generic TLDs and uh, new TLDs you know CCTLDs and you know what we're seeing is that the take up is really pretty small so you know uh, there, there are quite a few reasons um, coming from uh, you know again you know coming back to my region one of the issues is that you know we have a lot of languages you know we have countries where we have uh, 242 language dialect creoles you know um, so basically um, getting, getting, getting IDNs is a bit difficult just because first you need to have, you know, consistency first in the standard, in the alphabet that is being used. Second, you need to choose between the languages. Do you alienate part of your community or do you just, uh, you know, stick to the, the official language? So these are some of the issues that are there. And, uh, you know, as we said yesterday, uh, part of it is also that some of the equipment is not speaking our yeah language, so you know it's it's pretty difficult. But you know um, we're working on it. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't uh, I wasn't questioning that at all. I think uh, I'd like to to come to you, Konstantinos Kamaitis uh, of the Internet Society, because Anne Rochelle just mentioned the the issue about having equipment in your own language and of course the Internet Society has been part of a study which shows us a very surprisingly strong correlation between the presence of local infrastructure, internet exchange points of which there have been many successful examples in Africa and local language content. Uh, it, do, you, do you see, you know, what role do you see domain names playing in that whole kind of mush? 
very briefly, uh, very briefly, I, I, I see uh, CCTL this literally bringing all these issues together, all these issues that uh, the, the African, for example, region uh, is uh, facing. The, the, the CCT, CCTLD is able to bring this to the forefront, first of all, to the wider community in order to expose those issues, in order to make sure that the, the, the wider community within and outside ICANN uh, understands that these are the challenges. And uh, in particular, the Internet Society, as you said, Emily, since 2004 has been holding technical workshops in the African region in particular, in the, in the, and in the developing world, through its chapters and its uh, regional bureaus, in order to understand, first of all, the CCTLDs. And uh, the way I see it, it is not accidental that over the course of the years, we see more and more CCTLDs emerging. And they are emerging because there is a market, first of all, if we take it from a financial point of view, that they, you know, it invites them to emerge, but there is also a social need for them to emerge. And I found particularly interesting what you said about uh, Africa and the so many languages that you have. And I think that this is a role, for example, that CCTLDs also can play uh, because, you know... ICANN, for example, will had a priority depending also on population. But right now, there is also a chance through the work that CCTLDs are doing. And as long as you, uh, we continue to invest on infrastructure and social infrastructure and everything to bring all of this together. And for me, this is one of the most important things that... Uh, operators can achieve because they know their needs and we need to take advantage of that in order to be able to understand what these needs are. Thank you very much. I notice that we're all sort of looking on at this through very, in an English expression, through very rosy tinted spectacles. We're, I mean, if we all come out of this room thinking, you know, those CCTLDs, they're just absolutely wonderful. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> and if you have any problem in life, the CC is going to, to solve it for you. Uh, is this your experience on the ground? Um, as I said before, um, CCTLDs are very uh, probably the first internet uh, representatives of the DNS in in many countries in developing regions, and uh, it's maybe the only uh, one of the few points of contact of the global uh, internet and the DNS. And um, and I, I want to go back to one of I think it was Constantino's second intervention regarding the differentiation of CCTLD um, that how they still keep up this uh, space for themselves, and I. And I think there's, with the new GTLD program and, and in general with all the best practices, um, CCTLDs do have a global responsibility in terms of security and uh, of the DNS. And so uh, I, I, do, I do think that uh, that is a global overarching principle for all TLDs if we want one seamless internet. And I'm very concerned about the uh, performance of CCTLDs in many countries, not just in developing or emerging economies, in many countries whose standards might not be up to the moment. So. And, and this comes to the, to the questions about accountability mechanisms and, and maybe Michael, this, you know, do you share Carolina's concerns from where you're sitting? When you look at the diversity of CCTLDs, which is wonderful, as we've all heard, Carolina's highlighted one of the downsides of that diversity is that there's also a diversity in capability. And that given the role, given the importance that we've all been hearing about, is that something that you can really stand by and let happen? Are you comfortable? I... I um I think it's, a, it's an extremely good point that Carolina makes. Um, but it's not only the capacities of TLDs, CCTLDs. It's the capacities of many operators in the Internet, as we say, ecosystem, that are different. It's also the capacity of nation states uh, to interact with their... Uh, operators which are not necessarily always part of the internet ecosystem but have a huge impact on its security um, but I don't want to kind of 
put this in a general mishmash and then say, okay, it's a, it's a problem of life. You're totally right. And I'm, I am specifically concerned now because my impression is that there is a move uh, in, in the fragility of the net from attacks that are very visible against some operators that do services or, or financial services mm-hmm. uh, and with, uh, with a lot of reporting to attacks below the radar screen of the newspapers and the television uh, which concern the DNS. So I am, and that's, that makes me concerned because you hear a lot by the, from those if, if you are talking to them how there has been a scaling up of attacks. And that, of course, once, you, once those who attack move towards the softer parts of the systems, that might be a real problem. Do you, do you regard um, uh, CCTLDs as a part of the critical infrastructure? Oh, I mean... Or you can translate that into a question that doesn't contain a term of art. You know, what is no, the impact uh, if these things uh, fail? I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm. Thank you for getting me out of the discussion. What is critical <laughs> in, infrastructure? Because that's not. But uh, I mean, it's just look at the size of of some of these, and then I don't have to to differentiate between CCTLDs and other TLDs. I mean, once you are a big part of the ecosystem, or even if you're not big, you are essential for a national ecosystem, then you are critical. And you need to get your Spider-Man outfit, don't you? Because you've got your picking up. I'm not going to get into that discussion (laughs) either. (laughs) But that is that is really a concern, and I mean, the whole the whole family has to look at that because because. uh, this is this is is this, this is growing underground, but I sense that this is going to be a, a big issue and will come up in over over the next year uh, even more. Thank you very much for that. Does that does anybody in the audience want to uh, raise a question or comment? Thank you. Oh, yes, a very quick one from uh, Constantinos who just wants to respond to Michael, and then I'm going to come to you. Not necessarily to Michael. Uh, I want to go back to the issue of accountability that you've mentioned. And I think that, and because you said, yes, we're presenting things to be very rosy and jolly, uh, and it's not really always the case. Uh, For example, one of the issues of accountability that we see a a lot of challenges, and I think that was one of the questions as well that was distributed to us, is blocking and filtering. So there uh, there you have the government making decisions, and of course you cannot go and say to governments, don't do that. There is no way you can do that. But at the same time, because it is within the CCTLD space, you you don't necessarily know the policies and the processes, and you, you, you can suspect, you can surmise, but because it, it is within this, if you want, more closed uh, policy ecosystem in comparison to the GTLDs, you really have their issues of accountability. And because CCTLDs operate under the general internet infrastructure, then you have technical questions being raised and all those issues. Thank you very much much for raising that, Konstantinos. I think we're going to come back to those sort of issues of accountability, due process. Um, uh, First of all, I'd like to hear from you, ma'am. Can you say, is the mic on now? Okay, thank you. Can you say, my question is, and, and would you mind introducing yourself first, please? Um, certainly, I'm Karen Mulberry. I'm with the Internet Society. I've been hearing a lot this week in, in numerous workshops about um, the upcoming Wicket discussions, and I was just curious as to what the panel thought about um, CCTLDs and what might come up in, in terms of Wicket in, in a couple of weeks. And how that might relate to being in a, in a treaty or not in a treaty. Thank you very much for that question. Um, we've got some CCTLD operators and managers in the room. Um, if you are one, could you just raise your hand if you're going to attend the Wicket Conference, for example? 
one. So I think that that's more, less hands than we have CCTLD operators in the room. So that, that might answer your question in one sense. Uh, two, thank you. <laughs> no, you want to raise a question. Um, do you, Kuo Wei, do you want to respond to this point about wicket? Yeah. So how worried are we by wicket? Did you want to... I should say that um, yeah, we will have a member, um, a represent. Sorry, my name is Susan Chalmers, and I'm the policy lead for Internet New Zealand. Um, and uh, most of the uh, CCTLD uh, issues are actually handled um, by uh, Debbie Monahan, who is the CE of the Domain Name Commission. So I should I should just stipulate that. But we will have. Um, likely a representative from Internet NZ uh, joining the delegation at Wicket. But I, I think the more interesting question which was raised by, by the speaker was, you know, is this actually viewed as a, a challenge, a threat? Is this going to change the landscape? Um, is this something that you wanted to, to comment on, Kwewe? Okay. Uh, just uh, answer the question very quick. I'm Guo uh, Weiwu. I'm the ICANN board. And first of all, as you know, the CCTLD actually is a, a very independent it's a country code, and they have a 70 issues. So, uh, you know, in the ICANN, uh, even in the IANA, I was an IANA committee chair. And regarding for a declaration or redeclaration, we fully respect the sovereignty country decide who where they want to assign who doing the you know the CCTLD operations so that back to you is uh, uh, is that would be an interesting issue to be raised in the we get I would say uh, that is not a hard issue in the wicked from my point of view because uh, they already have a sovereignty issue in, in in regarding for the CCTLD and it's a fully respected you know right now. For example, like the CCTOD and uh, the ICANN relationship, in general, it's just uh, most of them is just a MOU, and many of them actually even without a MOU, they just have a very independent operations, you know, and, and basically just uh, you know uh, that is not the critical issue from my point of view, you know. First of all, and back to the the the, the uh, this uh, this uh, workshop is uh, talking about a uh, CCTLD. I would say, you know, a lot of people maybe is a question about what is a new GTLD impact to the CCTLD or something like that. From my point of view, is uh, first of all, um, you you can think about right now how many TLD years. The TLD right now we have a GTLD and the CCTLD added all up. It's about three hundred around 300 to 310 uh, GTLD, uh, TLD right now. Uh, right now, the registrar around the world uh, under the certification of the ICANN, roughly about thousands, okay? But uh, how many new GTL applicants right now is 1,900 something. And eventually, even just 1,000 is passed by, you will see the ecosystem is going to change uh, because uh, you will s eventually you will see the registrar and registry is the number of the registry more than the number of the registrar, and and somehow you, 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 the real go to the end user is uh, through the registrar, is not a registry, you know. So I think uh, a lot of new GDD need to back the registrar to put them on the first page, you know, that's a f one thing. And the second thing I think is, a, is, is also important back to the CCTOD. Eventually, if you have a, say, 1,900 or 2,000 TOD, I would say CCTOD still have their own very particular identification and meaning because uh, that is a kind of the, your identification. For example, you are in in you know uh, Sweden. You would like to go to the you know their uh, CCTOD. Like if you are in the Netherlands, you like to go to the NL. So the people know you are in from the Netherlands. I, I think that's still a very very 
privilege for the CCTOD resign in this uh, TOD ecosystem or the whole industry. So I I, I don't see a, a really threat or, or or you know something to worry about. The the important thing of the new GTOD from my point of view is that we like to see is any new business model to be happen in the domain name industry. Because right now, as you know, the domain name industry is kind of the registry and then go registrar and then go to the registrant. And this kind of system is uh, running for many years already. Is any possible there is a have an innovative business model coming out with a new GTOD opening? I think this is uh, something we like to see. Well, I think that, that leads us very nicely to Marco. Uh, from Google, could you please share your innovative ideas for new business models with us? I would love to. <laughs> I will make a spin-off uh, uh, tomorrow as a startup. Uh, no, first I, I need to apologize because I arrived late and need also to leave early for for a very important meeting. I'm very sorry about that. But going back for a second to the accountability. Uh, topic which is very near to my heart and also to the question that was made before about the wicket. I think one of the, 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 the positive point of all this process is first of all we have this debate but in more in general uh, the, the whole uh, um, ICANN process is managed in a way which is multi-stakeholder and then allows oversight from, this, from all, the, all uh, the interested parties and also feedback and, and, and and, and, and therefore possibility also to redress in case we are not going in the right direction. Now, if we see other processes like, for example, the wicked, probably this opportunity is less, uh, is less present. So this is a reason of concern. So we really hope that answer to this question that the, we, we are continuing having this discussion. I hope uh, next year we come back also with some good example of business, successful business model coming out from the GTLDs. Okay, I think we'll hold you to that promise. Do you have a, okay, I think we have a, a question from the remote, and then I'm going to come to you. Um, hello, uh, is it okay with the sound? Yeah. Uh, we are having one question uh, from Doug Bolohor Eric, who represent IGF Cote d'Ivoire. I, uh, Ivory Coast, how can African uh, CCTLDs uh, proceed to be competitive in the framework globalization? Thank you. Thank you very much. And that, that raises an issue uh, that, that we, we've, um, we've been thinking about. It also resonates a, a bit with the, the comments that we heard from Kuo Wei Wu. Uh, Anne Rochelle? How, how can African CCTLDs be competitive? Um, right infrastructure, right pricing, right uh, policies. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, basically be part of the whole, um, you know, not only ecosystem, but be part of the internet and have the right content once again. You know, um, one of the reasons why people go buy other domains is simply because it's easier, it's less expensive, and, you know, they have some content out there that is dear to them. So uh, this is simply replicating that type of model at home. And this is one of the things that, uh, you know, a lot of our organizations have been helping around. Um, you know, um, AfriNIC helps in making sure that, content can stay at home in terms of, uh, yeah, helping with the local internet exchange points. We give them, you know, secondary service for free, uh, you know, for uh, uh, servers. We uh, help them put, uh, you know, copies of root servers at home to, uh, you know, cut on the latency thing. Um, but I, I just also want to come back a little bit to Karen's question on, you know, CCTLDs and ITRs. Um, in as much as they're not involved, I do believe that, you know, some of the issues that are being talked about, and this is not only in ITRs, it's a simple model of, yeah, um, I'm an operator, I need bandwidth. Who has bandwidth? Um, you know, I'm, I'm a CCTLD operator. I need bandwidth. The bandwidth is in general with, uh, you know, telecom operator. And if it's too expensive, again, uh, my business model will not hold, you know, especially when the CCTLDs are in environments where, you know, the, uh, the, the, 
community is not really helping. Uh, when, when, when in the case of universities, for example, uh, as we all know, I mean, in a lot of places, universities live with subsidies from the government. So does, you know, does that subsidy go in the CCTLD or in some something that, that is needed, you know, for the students in faculties and all of that? Can the business model be sustained with only, you know, uh, student volunteers doing certain things? Um, can we, um, um, how do you say, ramp up the, uh, the infrastructure to really make it secure if there is no money around to buy equipment? These are just some of the issues that are around. So, you know, and we need to face that. And a lot of uh, the CCTLDs in my region are either, you know, in universities or in, let's say, parastatal organizations that simply have the hardest time to make the policies, bring the, give, give them just simply um, people time, you know, to work on them. I, I know a lot of places where the CCTLD operator is basically moonlighting, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> no, truly. So these are all some of the issues that we absolutely, you know, need to face and, uh, you know, take up. And uh, I think my um, friend from Cote d'Ivoire will understand that. Thank you very much, Anne Rochelle. Um, the lady from the Internet Society, I'd kind of like to throw your question back to you because, you know, there was a workshop on Wicket earlier this week and people were virtually queuing to get into the room. And it's been an incredibly divisive and explosive issue for many in the community. And yet you raise your question and there was barely a ripple in this room of CCTLDs. Do you think that the CCTLDs should be more worried than they are? In part, yes. And, and to Anne Rochelle's point, you know, it's going to be the economics that will trickle down and impact them. So should they pay attention? Yes. Um, and, and that was kind of what I was curious about, you know, is anyone paying attention? Do they, um, are they aware of, of, you know, the potential impact as this all rolls down and, and what that might mean for their, their network access um, and other um, accommodations that they may have to make? I mean, there's been a lot of different proposals put forward for discussion and implementation through the treaty process not sure exactly which direction it will go. I mean, if you have to do routing permission, what would that do to a CCTLD? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that was one of the proposals that, that have yet to be uh, fully fleshed out through the discussions, but that is something out there that is of concern. Thank you, and thank you for letting me uh, come back to you in this way. I, I have Peter Van Roster, and then I've got Quo Wei. And we're just about six minutes to go, so we... Um, it's great that you're contributing. So if we can just try and get both voices in. And is there anybody else who'd like to have a final shout? Put your hand up now. Your mic's not on, Peter. Hello. Thank you, Emily. My name is Peter van Rosten from Centre. Um, to answer that question, um, yes, CCTLDs are involved. So Centre has um, about 52 CCTLD members. Um, 15 of those are actively involved in the preparations to Wicket, whether it's through local preparatory meetings or whether it's as part of their uh, national delegation as um, industry members. Um, in addition to that, in order to get involvement from those other members that haven't been paying very close attention, mainly because they're sometimes a one or two man shop like Malta, for instance, um, the center has distributed an excellent document that was prepared by one of our members, CIRA, the .ca Canadian uh, registry, and written by Alan McGivley, who, Gillivry, who was here, uh, yes, who still is here. Uh, so any questions on that paper to Alan? Uh, that paper has also been circulated to the CC and SO, so there it reaches about 150 CCs. And it's a very practical paper. Um, it even includes a letter that CCDLDs can send to their regulators uh, in order to get their attention and make a couple of uh, very relevant points 
and not for the CCTLD specifically, but for the ecosystem um, in general. Thank you. Kuo Wu. Thank, Thank you for that intervention, Peter. So, uh, and that's very valuable to have uh, the, uh, the, the hard facts to, to back up your arguments. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to back to, you know, uh, her question about, you know, your, your concern. Uh, in some sense, uh, you, you are seeing is uh, uh, kind of the possible. Uh, the reason is uh, if the ITR, if the ITR go into development and developing like, uh, for example, like endnotes, suggestions. And from my point of view, what I saw, if the endnote suggestion is to be accepted, I will see the cost will move to the consumer. And the difficulty for the CCTOD will be happen because uh, many of the developing countries of the CCTOD, because you want to run uh, consistently, you know, for example, 100% available, most of the CCTOD, the DNS, actually locate not in their own area. For example, most of the CC, most of the DNS actually locate around the, the world. For example, uh, you know, uh, you can you can think about any CCTOD. They have more than one DNS, not only in their country, also in the other country, to maintain the you know the availability and you know the the accessibility issues. The 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 the, the issue can be happen to the developing country is very. We need to worry about that. Is uh, if the price going up. If the price going up because of ITR the, the modifications, then make those of the developing country is very difficult to make their DNS in the you know many diverse area. In that case, for that area, for that country, or for that you know the society, their DNS is not hundred percent accessibility. Then they have a problems. So, it's from my point of view, maybe it's not direct, but will indirect will be affect to the CCTOD operations. Thank you very much. And just in the last minute or two, um, I think I'll probably just draw things to a close here, uh, and to say thank you very much to our panelists who've um, been generous with their contributions and also we've not only gone around the world we've sort of gone around the houses in our converse conversation today but also thank you to the audience for making your interventions which have enriched the conversation very much we've heard stories of diversity of the both the opportunities and the challenges that uh, that CCTLDs, particularly those in developing countries, are facing at the moment and will be facing as the environment changes. I think one thought uh, to, to echo a, a comment from the audience as we leave is that one possibility, as, as the whole of the, the domain name endings become so diverse, one possibility is that consumers will become much more aware of them than they have been. and and. Uh, you know, because my experience is that often people just assume it's .com. And so if that happens, then it might well be an opportunity for the CCTLDs because people will be looking at the end of domain names in a way that they haven't done before. So uh, on behalf of everybody, I would like to thank our panellists and also to thank Centre for organising this workshop today. Thank you.